Well, thank you very much for joining us today. We do have something new coming soon. And as you have all seen the invite, we are introducing the new Christie M 4K25 RGB. And the M series has been a true icon for Christie. Uh, it has just been a phenomenally successful platform. And so we're taking that icon and we're just reimagining it. So without any further ado, this is the M, the new M 4K25 RGB projector. It does replace not only M series, but J series as well. It is brighter with more resolution than any, M's, uh, any M or J series uh, that we have ever delivered. So uh, it has more resolution, more, uh, it is just, it's a really phenomenal package. Very similar as you'll see to the original M. So of course the markets and applications for this product are the same core markets that we have gone after with the Griffin and the D4K40 and the SST and all the other types of platforms that we've been uh, launching with our three chip platforms. So planetariums, projection mapping, large scale events. This is just another uh, very valuable tool in that, uh, in, in that opportunity. Let's see if you can make sure everyone is muted besides myself. Um, it does have the same phenomenal, you know, spectacular visual quality of color. It is a leading form factor, meaning it's smaller than anything else that has existed in, in a pure RGB all-in-one type form factor. Just tremendous flexibility and, and power. So just a recap for, I know you've probably all seen this before. I'm going to go quickly over this, but we are really approaching the full REC 2020 color volume, and uh, it just allows for much more color, much more realism. And, you know, here's here's an example of how the, um, uh, you know, what we're looking at. Unfortunately, you're all looking at monitors or devices that are not better than Rec. 7 or 9, more than likely. So we have to sort of fake an image uh, to get the idea across. But the colors you can see on the right hand side are much more vibrant and much more uh, much more visual, something else that's really exciting to look at. Uh, the colors on the left are there, but they're just, they don't really pop. And so what we're trying to do is provide that extra bit of, of color just to make it that much more engaging. And of course, all of that is because of art and nature, and the real world with, with LED screens, and of course, branded content where color accuracy is very, very important. So. I wanted to make sure that you are aware of why all those REC 2020 colors really make a difference. Let's get into some of the technical specifications, probably mostly why we're all here. So of course we use the, stand, the same 10 M and J and Crimson lenses that we've been offering for years, um, including the 0.37 UST all the way up to 10.4 uh, to 1. The longest two lenses require a lens hood to be added to the uh, to the system. So the additional lens cone is something added for uh, just for safety purposes, uh, but it will be able to use the full range of lenses. We are also introducing four brand new ultra high contrast lenses, which are giving 7,000 to one contrast. Uh, they'll cover the range of 1.28 to 2.5. 2.56 or you know 1.3 to 2.5 in that range, and those are really spectacular. Uh, the, the image quality of those are really quite spectacular. Of course, it works at 200 to 240 volts, uh, up to 25,000 lumen brightness, up to 40 degrees C, and in harsh environments as well with uh, protected electronics. Uh, it does have a field replaceable laser optical system. You don't have to send the projector back if you ever need to replace the laser uh, the laser system. Uh, but it also operates if you put it at half brightness or if you're in a zone that is running at 100 to 120 volts like in Japan or the United States, uh, you will be able to run this at 50% brightness for up to 50,000 hours at a continuous color brightness stable level using our light lock technology. So this is a very, very powerful long life product uh, as well. So standard fan modes, we're running uh, 46 dB in environments, 
And as the as the temperature increases at full power, so does the sound level go up. But if you're not at full power, then that those numbers shift around and it will go all the way up to 40 degrees C, as I was noting. Um, and if you put the projector in performance mode, meaning full fan speed for maximum performance at all times without any any uh, throttling back of the lasers, then it will work at a higher sound level of 55 dB. We developed this is. Uh, not the first optical actuator product on the market, but it is a very unique one that we developed a special optical uh, actuator technology for this that works at higher rates that allows us to uh, basically reduce or eliminate all the artifacts that are typically seen with other actuated products. So it increases the potential frame rate as well, where we can work in actuated mode all the way up to 120 frames per second in both 2D and 3D with the optional barrage uh, interface. So, um, so a size comparison. So you can see it's very, very similar in size to the original M series. It is a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and a little bit taller. That weighs a little bit more, but it's very, very similar in footprint and it also does bolt on to the existing bolt patterns. So if you have an M-series projector in place, you can unbolt it, take the lens out, put it in this projector, and drop it in place. In most cases, you'll be able to just drop in the projector and have it operate out of the box. We also do work with the existing uh, staging cages that we've had, the, our, our rigging frames. So it will work in the existing rigging frames as well, but we're also working with a third party to develop a new lighter cage that will just make it that much more flexible, um, but also compatible with the existing cages. So of course, one of our uh, products that we have consist, we're using consistently in our product line, we introduced it first with Griffin, is our True Life uh, Plus platform, which works at a, uh, the same 1.2 gigapixel per second, so enabling 4K resolution of up to 120 frames per second. Um, so it will do also, if you turn the actuator off optionally, it'll do 480 frames per second at 2K. So very, very powerful platform, uh, many different inputs, uh, and we also have a Christie Link loop through. So if you had a stack of projectors and you wanted to have one cable that goes to feed both, you can do a Christie link loop through between the output of one projector and the input of the next. We also have SDVOE as our video input option that we also provide, uh, giving a lot of flexibility. So HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.2, uh, many, and of course 12G HDSDI. So many different options to be able to get video into the system. So. One of the features we, we introduced actually with the Griffin 4K32, which has been wildly successful, uh, we have also put into this platform. It's, it's called Electronic Color Convergence. And what it does, it allows you to converge the red, green, and blue from each ship without having to go on a ladder or a, or a lift to be able to dial in those colors right from a remote control right in front of the projector. So you can really dial in that image quality and get really great registration between red, green, and blue. And you never have to go on a ladder or a lift to be able to keep it in, in, in that quality. Of course, we have our Mirage upgrade, as I was noting earlier. It does list for Griffin 4K32 and 4K25. Uh, the, this is the standard part number. It works at, in this platform, it obviously works at 4K UHD. Uh, but also works at, uh, at, at, at for 2D and 3D at those frame rates. Uh, so for 60 hertz per I in 3D. We don't need that with the Mirage SST because it already is a Mirage, but for the Mirage Pro option, which gives us the 240 to 480 frames per second at 2K and HD. Plus, of course, we also have the Christie View option included in that Mirage Pro bundle, which allows us to have uh, up to uh, up to four people seeing 2K um, and HD at 
240 frames a second or at 60 hertz per eye. If it's four people, uh, it would be 60 hertz mono per person, each one with their own view or two people in 3D. So those are the part numbers for that. And so we did have this actually at a whisper suite in Orlando, Florida. Uh, and we had this along with many other projectors where we had SST and we had uh, Griffin, we had Microtile LED around the corner. It was a really fantastic demo and people were really stunned how small the the uh, prototype M4K25 was making such a fantastic image on the screen. And we also had it at Infocom China. Now, Infocom China was a tech preview, it was not a product launch. We're still not quite at launch day, but we're getting closer to it. There's a data sheet that was sent out. I believe it will also be followed up after this uh, session. You'll get the preliminary data sheet. And it really talks about all the details and lists all the lenses and things. So please, you know, keep uh, keep an eye out for that. Very good tool. And just some other images. So we, we use the same kind of uh, uh, interface that we've had on our other platforms. Uh, so you can see the, the standard interface control that if you're familiar with uh, the, the Griffin, it's identical to the Griffin, has the same input options as the Griffin. Um, and all the air intake is on the other side. So we're very excited about what this platform can do. The exhaust all goes out the rear. This really is a super compact all-in-one 25,000 lumens with MJ and crimson lens compatibility. So it really is double the brightness of M, has double the color volume of the old M, and four times the resolution of what we used to do. So with infinite possibilities. So this is really a phenomenal platform that really allows us to take this into whole new opportunities to bring it to a new generation of, of customers. So with that, I want to introduce uh, Rashub Nayar. Uh, he is the uh, sales director of, of Enterprise India. And uh, Rashub, if you want to say a few words and then we'll get into questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Larry. Uh, Steve, is my uh, voice audible? Yes, your audio okay. is good. OK, thank you very much. Uh, good morning and uh, good evening to all of our uh, customers. We hope uh, all of you are doing safe and well. Uh, note of gratitude to um, all of you for your support all through these years and especially during the last two years. It's been a tiring time for uh, our industry. Uh, as we say, moving ahead to uh, brighter times, uh, we at Christie are, are very ex excited about this uh, new launch. Uh, as my colleague uh, Larry pointed out, um, M-Series, when it was uh, launched uh, way back in uh, 2008 or 2009, it was a game-changing product in a lot of ways. And we feel that um, with this version, uh, we just take us, it takes us a leap ahead of uh, pretty much any of the products today which are available in the market. Um, apart from the feature set, uh, uh, which Larry has again pointed out, whether it is the color reproduction or the saturation or the longevity of the unit, the noise levels, um, something which uh, I personally feel uh, uh, and I would want to highlight to um, all of you is that uh, when we got into the, uh, as we call it, the RGB game almost uh, six years ago and uh, converted a pretty much a six foot laser lack laser rack to go into a projection unit. Uh, not many in the industry were advocating for the technology and uh, uh, eventually over the period of these years, the industry saw the benefits uh, of RGB and uh, now we're seeing all together a philetra of uh, product launches in RGB happening from uh, from us, from all our friends across the industry, pretty much just speaks about uh, how the technology is taking the leap. With this unit, of course, uh, uh, to produce the similar brightness at uh, one fifth the size, and I was speaking to uh, Chris yesterday, and at one third the weight of our closest competition is, uh, is surely a notable feat uh, for us, and uh, we hope uh, uh, customers uh, in yourself uh, do take uh, uh, value and note of it. Um, with that, uh, thank you again for joining. Uh, we would open the floor to uh, questions and uh, take care all of you. Yes, the, uh, so there's a question about the weight. And uh, yes, it is 42 kilograms. 
Uh, it is uh, 92 pounds, uh, 42 kilograms uh, for the for the product. Yeah, you'll see a thumbnail right here. <clears throat> you can see them where hopefully you can see my cursor. Uh, yep. You'll be able to see a thumbnail of whatever video is being shown on the projector or being fed into the projector on that live source. You can actually see a thumbnail of that right on this on this uh, color screen on the side. It's not a, it's not a three LCD, Steve, but uh, it yeah. is a, a I meant color. A color LCD is what I meant. Right. I, I know I know is what you meant. Uh, it is, but it is a full color, and it offers the same controls with the menu and input options, and uh, the, the same interface that we've been using uh, for some time. We've tried to standardize on that because our customers really understand how this works and understand the power of it. Of course, also controllable via Ethernet. <clears throat> so you can plug in and use a uh, use a laptop or another control device, AMX Crestron, and uh, use all those powerful tools as well. Did you talk a lot of, or you want to talk a little bit about LightLock? Well, LightLock is our technology that basically synchronizes uh, the RGB uh, colors and ma it maintains them at that same setting from the initial setting. So wherever you set it, uh, LightLock just maintains that color profile and maintains that that uh, stability uh, over time. So at the lower brightness, it maintains that consistently. At a higher brightness, it will maintain the color. If you're at full brightness, eventually the brightness will come down as the lasers age, or you can run it at a mid-level and maintain that for a much longer period of time, regardless of temperature and other factors going on. So as I mentioned, you know, we've done hardening of the electronics for harsher environments, uh, for high humidity environments, things along those lines. Uh, but the, the projector is really designed for ultimate flexibility and, uh, and usability and having a, a low, uh, low maintenance type of thing. And that's what LightLock really does. It gives us that low maintenance opportunity. And it also offers built-in Christie Twist again, which was actually uh, originally launched, I think, with the original M series. Uh, correct. Yep. Uh, we used to have Twist as an option. Uh, Twist is a uh, standard feature that we've been offering since we launched the original M and then later the J uh, and all of the other products that really come since uh, Twist uh, with Mystique capabilities are built into the projector. So uh, the Mystique is an option with an optional camera and that's a, another accessory that you can get, but it works with the Twist hardware and software that's built into the projector and of course Twist uh, there's a basic version of Twist that you can download for free that works right with the projector so you can warp and shape and blend the projectors together all without having to buy any other accessories. All that is built into the product. And additionally, Mystique Lite is also uh, an optional download that comes at no extra cost. Uh, correct. It's so yeah, the the uh, Christie Link loop through uh, is active. If you do lose your your feed, you will lose to both. Uh, so you would eat, if you're in a high demand redundant environment, you might run two signals, one to each projector, uh, but you don't you're not required to do so. I also see a question uh, regarding the M series lenses and accessories. So the lenses are all compatible with the existing M. Uh, with the new with the new M that were from the original M and J series, as well as Crimson. So same exact lenses. The accessories uh, it depends on what accessories you're referring to. Uh, the cage uh, and mounting those would be completely compatible. Don't forget the lens goes in inverted uh, on this platform, but it should go in exactly the same with all the lenses, with the exception of the UST lens which really came sort of at the end of the N series platform. With the UST, the UST is angled or has a 90 degree bend in it. And on this projector, because the lens is inverted, the lens would point the other direction. So other than that, uh, complete compatibility with the lenses, as long as for the longer lenses, you get those longer lens hoods that we will be offering as well. Larry, there's a question about uh, manual convergence versus the electronic digital convergence. Uh, we've actually found with the Griffin platform that it was so successful 
there was no need to run mechanical convergence beyond what we do at the factory because it was redundant. So Steve, uh, I assume the units are ready for shipping as of now? No, they are not actually. In fact, uh, we're looking at mass production in late November. Okay, great. So to that point too, um, the regions have uh, and are being populated or have been populated with uh, demo products. So it's recommended that you request any, uh, you know, any demos from your regional sales manager and uh, to, to try and essentially get in the queue, so to speak. Um, I will have data on the airflow. I'm not sure about exit temperatures, but I, uh, I will get a uh, CFM. The CFM data is still in progress from engineering. I don't have that data, but we will get that information. It is not a particularly hot projector. Uh, when we run the prototypes, it was actually quite cool with the airflow uh, flowing through the system. So um, it is not, uh, not a high BTU output, but we will get the BTU rating and uh, the airflow uh, requirements for the product. We will, get, we will be issuing that information later. And um, what um, is this? Thing else again? And yes, the and as I mentioned earlier, the existing uh, customers that have ILS one, what we're calling ILS one lenses, the lenses that were used on MJ and Crimson. Uh, yes, those will work uh, directly on this. And so I don't know if my comment about digital conversions got out or not, but we are, this projector is only using digital conversions with the success we've had with the Griffin platform that offered both. Uh, we found that the reliability and stability of having a pre-calibrated uh, device that is then just dialed in with the uh, Final convergence is really a fantastic tool, and that's what customers are really responding positively to. Larry, there's another comment uh, about uh, assuming that Christy Link loop through is an is an active uh, is active, so it could be a point of failure for downstream projectors. Yeah, and yes, uh, that is, and I I mentioned that earlier, but yes, that is true. Uh, it is an active uh, link. If you lose the first projector. Uh, you could lose your signal if it's mission critical. Sending two feeds would be the way to do it. Uh, it but it does allow for the opportunity of, of of looping through with one signal. So what you could do is actually have your loop through, and if you wanted a second signal, you can send that over at either DisplayPort, HDMI, HDSDI, um, and have redundancy that way and switch over to that electronically. Um, that would be an, another, uh, for a backup plan, that would be another way to do it. And with, with that, I thank everyone very much for joining. I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful day or evening, depending on where you are in the world. And um, thank you very much.